And then there was one. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. We were pinpointing three waves in the Atlantic in yesterday's video. We talked about the bark, though, worse than the bite with two of those. Invest 95L certainly brought some heavy rain to the Caribbean. That wave off of Florida is going to bring heavy rain to the Sunshine State, but not going to develop tropically. So we do have one more wave to watch, and this could become the next name system of the 2023 hurricane season. If you want to stay updated on all things weather, especially as we go through hurricane season, hit that subscribe button for me. Saharan dust is also hanging tight around the Gulf Coast, really impacting Florida. This is headed towards Texas and the North Gulf Coast. And then we're going to take a look at that disturbance near Florida. It is going to be impactful. It's not going to get a name. It's not going to consolidate itself, but it is there. And it does look impressive from a satellite standpoint anyway with the storms bubbling off of the florida coast but again this is not going to grow up and be big and strong or anything like that before it comes into florida we are going to start though with the wave way out in the atlantic again a lot of time to watch this 30 percent chance for development over the next seven days as given by the national hurricane center you see a little bit of thunderstorm activity where x marks the spot southwest of the cabo verde islands out in this blob area, this yellow zone, that's where the Hurricane Center has drawn for the potential for development. So you see where that line goes. Again, not expecting any development out here. That's why there is a 0% shot for development over the next two days. But once we get closer to the Northeast Caribbean islands, this is where we could start to see some development. How much remains to be seen, but we're going to look at some model forecasts in a little bit. And this is what I was talking about here. There's all the thunderstorm activity off of the Florida coast towards the Bahamas. So it has been storming in the Bahamas. There is what's left of Invest 95L continuing to get ripped apart by wind shear in the eastern and central Caribbean, just south of Puerto Rico, south of the Dominican Republic, north of the ABC Island. So still bringing heavy rain, again, still impactful, but no, neither of those two systems are expected to become named or expected to become a tropical depression storm or hurricane or anything like that so just some rain do watch out for some flooding though in those areas all right so i want to show you two model representations everybody loves the euro we always talk about this it's always the battle between the european model and the american gfs those are just two of the global models that we use I want to caution that the Euro a lot of times struggles to develop these waves that roll off of Africa naturally, and it does not really do that with this one. We're going to start with the model spin. This is the amount of spin in the low levels of the atmosphere, meteorologically called vorticity, a couple thousand feet up, and it gives us an indication when we start to get a consolidated ball. I'll show you that in a little bit with the American GFS because it does develop this more. What basically we're looking for is that red color, but then to be like consolidated to look like a ball to indicate that we have that low level spin that low level rotation note this though this is kind of strung out like a string bean the disturbance is kind of all the way back here here is the deal there's a tropical wave located right there we have the winds coming in out of the southeast kind of kinks up to the north and then back down to the west for a tropical system, you need to have that closed at the center going counterclockwise. And you see that there. Let me move all my lines for you so you can actually see that wind field here as designated by the model. We have the lines coming this way, that way, that way, and then that way. There's nothing coming back to the south from the west. So that is why we call it a tropical wave. It is an open wave, not an area of low pressure. So that model spin again, big Bermuda high, chilling right there in the central Atlantic. We have that strung out disturbance heading towards the Northeast Caribbean. And there we go. So this is the healthiest point, at least on the Euro. This is going to be on July 30th. There is a date at the top of your screen right on in through there. It's at least looking better. It still does not look to be well defined from this model standpoint. Maybe tries to get its act together a little bit. But at this point, it is much weaker as this little dip in the jet stream out here. Big area of high pressure, the Bermuda Azores High, kind of working to kind of rip this thing apart. So the Euro is not too bullish on this system, but the American GFS is a little more over the latest runs. We're going to watch this closely. There we go. You see it kind of quickly getting together, and this is what I was talking about here. So here are our lines. We have winds coming that way. We have winds going back down. We have winds going there, and then you see the turn. So there we have... A tropical cyclone as designated by the model and certainly by the time it gets to the northeast caribbean we also have a tropical cyclone this could be a strong tropical storm or hurricane again based on the gfs you see it right there so here are the caribbean islands hopefully you like both of these representations that 
regardless of the strength, it kind of pulls it away. A couple of things here that would be steering this. There is the Bermuda Azores high again. And then there's that dip in the jet stream. I will say is, I know it's counterintuitive, but we do want this thing to get strong quick. Because it would be more likely to feel the tug of that trough, that dip in the jet stream there, and then be lifted and then round that Bermuda high. Safely going away from the Northeast Caribbean, north from the north away from the Turks and Caicos, and then certainly missing the United States at that point. So a lot to iron out still, a lot to watch on the timing. There we go into August 2nd. Pretty decent storm. Here is Bermuda for reference right in that circle here. So that'd be great if we can kind of just get a nice clean sweep up and out, missing the Caribbean, missing the Bermuda area, and then missing the United States. That would be awesome. The one thing that's not awesome, the sea surface temperatures. We have talked at length about this on this channel during hurricane season. It is jet fuel. It's crazy. We are way above normal, especially in the northeast, off the northeast coast of the United States, and then especially in the south florida area look at this 87 degrees 87 degrees closer to the coast it's 90 where the water is a little bit shallower uh more shallow you see it right there 85 average water temperature 84 there out uh, by the lesser antilles right off the coast of africa as well we are in the low 80s again these are more indicative of what we would see during the peak of hurricane season as we get towards september we are way above normal so we were just talking about the opportunity for this thing to get strong quick. That would be a benefit for that because, again, it would have a higher likelihood anyway of moving across and then getting flung right out, missing land. So that would be a positive. But just for kind of future reference, let me. we don't want anything. Obviously, we never want anything in the Gulf because it doesn't have anywhere to go but hit land. But just look at this. Look how deep, dark purple it is in here. Let me bring my query back. So I can show you what I'm talking about. And it's right in there. There you go. There's that 90 near the Bahamas. One of the buoys down uh, in the Florida Keys recorded a water temperature a couple of days ago of 101 degrees. Just insane. That's about uh, That was taken about five-ish feet below the mean low uh, tide level there. So again, a few feet under. Look at that towards Cuba around 90 where you're seeing that dark deep purple there. Upper 80s and lower 90s. Again, that is insane for really anytime, but certainly for late July. This is what we would typically see in September. It's because the trade winds were weak. It's one of the reasons why, and we haven't been able to upwell any of that cooler water that resides deeper down below the ocean surface. I want to talk about uh, Saharan dust now. It's been hanging around Florida for the past few days. It's been hanging through the Caribbean. Kind of see a little bit of it. Let me bring out my trusty arrow again. This is where it's light, the darker brown here through South Florida. We've been having some air quality issues as well. Let me zoom this back out and head towards the North Gulf Coast. We have it around the Big Bend of Florida. We have it off the Tampa Coast into the Gulf of Mexico, New Orleans. We're seeing some of that dust. It's lighter in Houston and San Antonio, but it is there. Certainly, it's going to help to enhance the sunrise and sunsets at this point because it's kind of that Goldilocks scenario. Too much? And it kind of makes for a milky, filtered sun, kind of ugly and dreary outside. Too little doesn't really do anything, but just right. And you start to get that sunlight reflecting off of that uh, particulate matter uh, about fifteen to 20,000 feet above your head. Going back a little more, I have to wait for the satellite channel to update. If it does, we do have a lot of that dust back in here too. So our system that we just looked at will be fighting a lot of dry, dusty air. I want to show you the dust forecast now, especially for the North Gulf Coast and the Atlantic side of Florida. There we go at 8 o'clock on Wednesday, July 26, a little bit later on in today from the recording of this video. But you see it right there, a lot of dust in South Florida. There's some of that brown again sliding towards San Antonio and Houston. And that brownish film on your screen will continue to light things up from New Orleans back to Houston, San Antonio. Big Bend of Florida, still hanging around towards North Florida, Jacksonville, and Orlando, kind of leaving the Miami area alone. I'll show you why in one second. But then there we go, kind of fizzling out as we move into the first couple of days of August from all of the North Gulf Coast, from San Antonio to Houston to Corpus Christi, New Orleans. Everybody going to get that rain or get that dust scoured out 
by some rain, certainly in Florida. So here is the deal. This is the thing, speaking of Florida, that was highlighted for a low shot for development. Again, we talked that this was not going to be a big deal on this channel, regardless if this became something, but most model guidance showed this thing kind of fizzling out as it moved into as it moved into Florida or up towards the Carolinas. And that's exactly what it's doing. Now, it does look impressive from all these colors that you see popping up on the screen. It is producing a lot of thunderstorms right now around the Bahamas into South Florida through the Keys. This is good news for maybe helping to cool the water temperature just a little bit. It's increasing the wind, and it is kind of churning up the water just a little bit. It's not going to do much, but it's something. But nonetheless, there's our little disturbance. We have... I'll show you. We have a little itty bitty upper low spinning right in here. See it? Watch the last couple of frames right off the southwest tip of Cuba. We have another one here. Watch it closely. And then our tropical wave is kind of right on through here. So that was the thing that was highlighted. So there's kind of three systems that are going to be impacting Florida, really all working together to kind of increase those rain chances. You see that swirl there, that swirl there, and then that tropical wave. All of that's kind of moving in this direction over the next couple of days. Now, the one thing to watch is if we can get something out into the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, there's not much picking up on that happening, but we just showed you how hot the Gulf was at this time. If we did get a circulation to kind of leave the Gulf Coast of Florida and then head over in that direction, water temperatures near 90 degrees, we would have to watch that closely uh, for the potential for something to develop before it got to Louisiana or Texas. Again, that is on the outside right now of the realm of possibilities, but anytime we can get any kind of thunderstorm activity in the Gulf, especially when it's that hot. You gotta watch it closely. Again, we'll keep you posted on that. But right now, there are no big threats to land from the tropics where you're gonna watch that one closely out by Africa. But most indications are that this will curve. Again, cautiously optimistic. It is way too early in the game. But we're gonna keep a closest eye on the Northeast Caribbean and then for our friends in Bermuda. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, if you want to stay updated on all things weather this hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. Oh yeah, if you hit that little notification bell, it's going to let you know anytime that we post new content so that you can be the first to know and the first to stay updated on anything that's happening weather-wise, especially in the tropics as we continue this hurricane season. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.